All right. Um, got me? We're good? We're good. So um, moving on, what I want to do in um, this hour and then on Friday is to show you some um, basic concepts of design that we will use um, when we do digital design. Now, we will go through um, quite a few of them fairly um, rapidly. Probably uh, go a little bit more in depth on the Friday um, structures. Now, each one of them may look simple, but they do come up very handy when you actually, when they are a part of um, a larger design. So these are concepts that I want you to be familiar with, um, that I want you sh um, to know the, the names for um, what we call them, um, and be able to use them if the thing, if the need comes up. Uh, the first idea is what we call hierarchical design. And it's pretty much similar to stuff you've done, you may have done in other elect courses. And then to put the functionality um, of a block um, inside some sort of a black box, give it some interface. The, interfa the interface are the, are the inputs and the outputs of the block and then specify um, what the function of this block is. Now, the idea is that you can, um, if you need to use the same functionality a few times in your circuit, you might design it um, once, enclose it in some black box, say these are the inputs and the outputs, this box here, that's what it does, that's its functionality, and then you don't care about the internals any further than this. From now on, you can take this block here, and what we call instantiate it several times in your circuit um, to pass whatever signals you want through this functionality here. So the example of the BCD2XS3 function that we implemented before, we might take the circuit, implement it, surround it by a black box, say the inputs are A, B, C, and D, which are the BCD code, the outputs W, X, Y, and Z are the XS3, and the functionality of these blocks for whomever wants to use it out there is pretty much BCD plus 3. So BCD to XS3. Now, as an example of um, when such design might come in useful, is if we da design a 4-bit equality comparator. Now, in this comparator, we need to take um, 4 bits, or 2 numbers of 4 bits, bits, bits each, um, A3 to A0 and B3 to B0 and then output a 1 if those two numbers are equal to each other and output a 0 if they're not. Now one way of um, doing this is to draw a truth table for all the possible combinations. So we have 8 inputs because we have 4 bits for A, 4 bits for B and we end up with 64 different um, rows for the truth table which is not really what we want. Alternatively, we could say, well, the operation we make on every um, matching bit is pretty much the same. We want to output a 1 if A1, if A0 is equal to B0, if A1 is equal to a B1, and so on. So we can design those blocks here that only compare um, the individual bits, so A0 to B1, A0 to B0, and then each one of them will just output whether um, those two bits are equal to each other. And then have another block here that will take those four um, inputs. And only if all four of them are equal to each other, will then output a one at the output. So this design obviously will be much simpler than try to come up with a truth table with 64 different rows. So for this implementation here, I will define that each um, comparison between two matching bits, um, I will call the function n, will output a 0 if they are matching and output a 1 if they're not matching. Now, this is slightly counterintuitive. Why output a 0 if they're matching and 1 otherwise? Um, the reason for this here it's just because I want it to be consistent with the examples given in the book. So if you don't understand what I'm doing, you can go to the book, and this is how they show it there. But there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't design it the other way around, that um, output a 1 when they do match, and output a 0 when they don't match. 
So I'm um, going through, uh, going by this speci specification here, uh, we know that if they do match, we want to output a zero. So it's those two um, entries in the truth table here, and either both of them are zero or both of them are one. And one if they don't match each other, which is just an XOR gate. An XOR gate is implemented in the structure that we saw before, uh, not A, B, or um, A, not B. And if you want the circuit, this is how it looks like. Now, the next step, need to take all the inputs from those different um, comparators, for the four different comparators, and then output a one if all the bits are matching, and output a zero otherwise. Now, because all the inputs um, will be zero if everything matches, we will use um, a NOR gate to do this. The idea is, is if at least one of them is a one, then the output of the NOR gate will be a zero, where if all of them are zeros, the output from the NOR gate will be a one. Um, again, this is not the only way to do it. You can actually um, implement using an end gate if um, in the previous stage you, you output a one if they match. But this is one way of implementing it. Now, putting it all together, we're going back to our um, comparator there. This is the block diagram that I showed you just before, where each one of them uh, will compare the single individual bit and then they all go through um, this comparator here. Now the MX blocks, why MX? I don't know. That's why it's called. We'll implement the function um, A, X, or B for each one of these. And then the ME block will be just a NOR gate. It will take all the inputs and output the result there. Now, obviously, this is just um, one example. When you do have more complex designs, this is the way to go. You will use um, a lot of hierarchical design um, in your labs, if you haven't done so already, where you design uh, your own circuit, then you make a symbol out of it, or make a symbol is pretty much enclosed into, um, into a box with um, inputs and outputs interfaces. And then you can instantiate it in your um, circuit as many times as you want. One point that I do want to emphasize is when you do something like this, that you only need to design it once, and then um, you can use it many times. When the thing is actually implemented on the chip, the design will be duplicated as many times as needed on the chip, because each one of those blocks will probably have um, different signals coming to it. So it's not like it's only implemented once on the chip. It will be implemented a few times, but these will all be um, duplicates of the same internal core um, circuit. Make sense? Right. Uh, questions about hierarchical design? Now, some of the most fundamental function, functions you can um, do for a single variable are those four functions here. Really, for one variable, you only um, have four different combinations of um, outputs you can implement. You can either implement the zero fixing, so a function that will always be a zero regardless of what your input is, which essentially will just be the function connected to ground. You can have um, a function called transfer, where f, the function and the output, is just equal to your variable. So essentially, it's just a wire, really. Or if you want to, you can um, put a buffer in the middle, depending on um, the case. You can invert the variable, so put an inverter.
And then f will be null x. In this case, f will just be x. Or you, um, similar to what we've done with the zero fixing, you can just um, do a one fixing and essentially connect your f to vdd. So again, ignoring your variable altogether and always output a constant one. Now, sometimes we will want to fix um, the functions to constant um, values. I just want to show you um, what we call them. Another concept that I want to introduce to you are the multi-bit variables. So similar to what we've just done before with the comparator, when we said we take two four-bit numbers, instead of defining four different variables, um, a3, a2, a1, a0, we can combine them all together into what we call a bus or a vector if you want. So if just before we denoted each one of those signals um, as a regular line, a bus will be a line that is going to be thicker and usually have um, some um, integer number that will say how many um, signals are actually going through this bus. Now this makes um, designing and simulating um, circuits a whole lot easier because um, you will have a lot of designs when you have multivariable, uh, multi-bit variables and instead of having lines all over the place you group them together um, into their um, sort of logical groups and then you pass everything through the bus. Now we usually uh, denote a bus either by a bolded uh, variable name so I don't know if you can see the difference, but this is a bolded version of A, similar to how we um, denote um, vectors in mathematics. Or we explicitly say uh, what's the size of the bus. So if you see a notation that um, looks like A uh, 3 colon B, uh, sorry, 3 colon 0, that means that this is a vector with um, four signals, and they are numbered 3, 2, 1, and 0. You will see later in the course when we talk about Verilog, you can actually go uh, and define that the signals will be from 0 to 3. Um, in different languages, you might see it um, different notations. You might see something like A0.3. Um, if you heard about uh, VHDL, which is similar to Verilog, which is what we'll do, you might have something like down to zero, sorry, three down to zero. So different notation, but the, the idea is usually the same, that you have the variable name and then to show the indices. Again, these are things you will do in the lab once you um, instantiate blocks that take multi-bit multi, multi -bit variables. We will use um, buses just to make things a bit simpler. And how is it simple? Like, take the 4-bit comparator that we talked about before, if we had to denote all the signals that we show, um, all eight signals coming to the inputs, this would be one bulky um, block diagram that will take up a lot of space in our, um, in our software when we design things. We can use vector notation here and then just show that A and B are both vectors with 4 bits each, which makes it a bit simpler. Um, another concept that we have is what we call enabling function. Enabling is something that it's a concept that you will see uh, quite a bit. You, you, you will usually have um, blocks that have an enable signal to them. And on Friday when we talk about um, other structures, I will show you how the enable signal um, comes into play with everything else. But the idea is that um, you can enable a block that will just make it operate as usual or disable it and then you will output some um, constant fixed value, either a zero or a one. Now, if you remember, we talked about three states buffers um, last Friday. 
and we sort of had this enable signal into our buffer. Now, in the three state buffer, this enable signal here essentially cut out the output altogether, or uh, made it a high impedance. This is not what I'm talking about here. In this case here, I'm talking about um, outputting a fixed value that's either going to be a zero or a one. So if the circuit or the block that I will talk about is disabled, I will get a comp say zero at the output, not cut the output altogether. It's not the same thing. Um, these are two examples of um, simple enabling circuits. So in this case here, I do have a circuit that output a zero uh, when it's disabled or just passes um, the signal A through when it's not um, disabled. So it's just a simple end gate. If the enable is zero, the output F will be a zero because ending anything with a zero is a zero. If the enable signal is a one, then essentially you'll get A and one, which will just let A through. Um, if I want to implement a circuit that outputs a constant 1 when disabled, then I will use an OR gate and um, invert the enable signal. And this will have sort of the same idea as the end there, only it will output a constant 1 when disabled. Because when this is 0, meaning I'm disabling the circuit, this will be a 1, anything OR with a 1 will give me a constant 1. If this is enabled, this will be a 0, and then I have A or 0, and I will just get the output A at the output. Simple enough? All right. Um, what I'll do now, here's the thing. It's a bit too hot now. So maybe we should stop here. We'll continue. Yeah. We'll continue on Friday. Hopefully, it won't be as hot as humid then. <laughs> <laughs>